everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I will be flipping through Berta Style Magazine, the May 2020 issue. I feel like not only two weeks ago, I had gone through the April issue. So I'm not sure if my April issue came late or my May issue came early. But anyway, let's go ahead and take a look. So the theme here is summer. It says, hello, summer. Fashion in a Provence style. Summery floral prints, breezy cuts, and romantic ruffle details let you shine in every moment. So the stage has been set for what's inside this issue. Open up, we've got a table of contents. As with every Berta issue, you have pictures of the garments for the patterns that are included inside this magazine. It's always fun to kind of pick out which ones I'm excited about and which ones I think are not so cute. The first article um, talks about pattern development and what it takes to get a pattern from conception to the market. So it just goes through the steps, um, starting with the theme and theme collage and mood board. So that's really just gathering your inspiration. Then you've got then you start sketching out the designs, then you move into pattern development. And then you know, you're going to start doing mock-ups and tweaking the fit. And then you'll go over to making the instructions and the pattern sheets. And this one always has me a little puzzled because it's like, what are they thinking when they write the instructions? Because you've probably heard me complain about this if you are a subscriber to my channel, that I don't think that instructions are always as clear as they can be. I have a hard time with this because I know how clear instructions can be written, especially if you use indie patterns. Their instructions just blow the commercial patterns out of the water. And then once they have the patterns in place, they've got to do grading and they got to fit all of these pattern pieces and sizes into, you know, these sheets that they can, we can take out and then we just trace off the pieces we need and the size we need. So I would not want that job. This looks like a big migraine, so no thanks. Moving along, we're gonna start with our first designs and we've got, um, looks like a mommy and me ensemble. And again, I'm sorry for the glare on the when I do these videos because I can't help it. It's just the material of these pages. Um, so we've got a suspender skirt for the little girl and then we have this blouse for the mom, if you will. The little girl is wearing cotton and she's wearing cotton. Well, it's the same, it's the same fabric. So there you go. Let's have a close up of the line art. Not really for me. Little girl's suspender skirt is cute though. Okay. Next we have this dress here and it is made out of a silk. And so if you look at the line art, it looks like it could be cute. And then this, to me, it just doesn't look cute. It looks like satin sheets gone wrong. I'm not sure. It's just, I don't find it flattering. And that is one thing, Berta, in my opinion, I feel like they really try to play with their style lines and, and, and their seams can be really about design rather than function sometimes. And it doesn't always translate well to the real world. I think a lot of times it looks great on the flat, the, the line art, but then you sew it up and it just looks funky. But some of them are really cool. Here we have a skirt and it's a cotton blend that she's wearing. I really like the colors in this. You take a look here at this line art. I like the idea idea of these pleats here. It look, makes it look like an, a big, a sort of inverted pleat, except you've got the spacing here. There's something about this. I mean, it's like I like it and I don't, and I don't know what it is I don't like about it for some reason. I'm, I'm not sure. I have mixed emotions for this skirt. Next, we have this darling little dress. Well, they call it a tunic for a little girl and she's wearing a cotton 
is it? It's an embroidered cotton. And then she's got, there's a top here that's really cute and that's in a cotton blend. I feel like this sort of style of dress I've seen before, but it's still cute nonetheless. And here's her little top. I think that's cute. I think you could lengthen that and make it into a dress if you wanted. Here, she's wearing the same embroidered cotton fabric as the little girl over here, and it is making her look kind of puffy. I just, I am not sure if I like the placement of those ruffles, though I get what they're trying to go for, but I'm not sold on that. And I'm not sold on this. I don't typically wear things that go off the shoulder. I mean, look, it's intended to kind of stay just barely on the shoulder, but practically speaking, does that happen? No. And then it just falls off. Sounding so negative, but I just don't trust that. But you know what? I don't know why I'm talking to you about that because I realize <laughs> the pattern on this is really referring to the skirt. Thank God. Um, so here's the skirt. Let's look at the line art. It's got a yoke, it's a button front, it's got a little ruffle, and it has a tie, and it's made out of cotton. I actually think this is pretty cute, this skirt. Hmm. Well, I like the one she's wearing, at least. Here we have a, do, 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 it's a top. It's a, it's a top. Well, it's like a camisole tank top. It's also got a button front, and they've made this out of a viscous blend. Here is a blouse jacket, and it has a zip-up front and sort of a sort of peplum. I guess, yeah, you'd call that a peplum, but it's got these pleats on either side. I think this is, I think this is cute. I, if I would probably lengthen this somehow and try to make it into a dress, though I'm not sure how those pleats would lay if I did that. It might just kind of stick out. But I, I love the zip up and I love the little Peter Pan collar. So there are elements of this that I really like. Here's a dress and they've made it out of a cotton blend. And we can take a look and see that it's got some gathers. It's got puffy sleeves. I really like the sleeves. I think I like this dress overall. But I do. And we have another top. This is made out of a viscous, and you've got these ruffles that run down where the kind of where kind of where the princess seems would be, it looks like. And then it goes into some looks like pleats here. Certainly does on what she's wearing. I like that. Would I make it? Probably not, but I like it. My favorite one, I think, in this magazine is this dress. Now, it is really simple, but I'm kind of more uh, go towards more simple classic silhouettes myself. So it's no surprise that I like this. I like that it's got these little ruffles. I like this sort of waistband, this wide waist. I guess it's a waistband, you call it that. They've made it out of a cotton. I quite like everything about what she's wearing. I think it's the perfect fabric. The only thing I think I maybe I found that I personally don't is I don't like that much of my back showing. That's just me and whatever you want to call my insecurities. I don't know, but I would probably raise that up slightly that, but I like the lines on that. I think it works well. Okay, moving along. So here they have chosen to highlight uh, the construction methods for the blouse with the little princess seam ruffles, if you will. I think that Berta does do a good job in their magazines, though, of illustrations and their, when they do these highlights and the instructions. So even though I was sort of bad mouthing the instructions for pattern companies, I will say at least the, this part it's good. Keep it up, Berta. Put these in your commercial pattern instructions. They kind of do, but I feel like these are better. Anyway, enough rambling. 
Here we have a blouse, and this is made out of a polyester blend. I get, for some reason when I first looked at this, I thought this was a knit, but it doesn't look like it. It doesn't seem like it is. Um, so it's got the little pleats. It's just the same as, sort of like this in a way, without the ruffle, and it's got sleeves. And here we have a simple skirt. I like that. I'd probably make it. I like the simplicity of it, and it's probably easy to make. But another skirt here, and they've made it out of a boucle. I like the buttons. Oh, because this looks very similar to... This is essentially like... This is the same skirt as we saw before. They just added the buttons. I think that's a nice touch. I like that detail. And here we have a sleeveless blouse and they have made it in a silk blend. And you can take a look at how they've done the seams here or here's some gathers at the neck and then these sort of diagonal seams at the shoulder. They go from the neck into your arm hole. Interesting. I like the stripes. It really plays nicely with those pattern pieces. Here's that simple skirt again, and this time it is in a polyester blend. And this blouse was featured, uh, it was one of the first patterns that we saw. Not bad. Right. Oh, look at that dog. Hello. This skirt, okay, let's, let's zoom in here. What's going on? I'm not sure about this fit. What is that? I don't really like that skirt. <laughs> oh, and here's that blouse again. I like, this is growing on me. When I first saw it, I wasn't sure. But I like it. I think I like it. This one's made in a polyester. Okay. Talking about the skirt. Shopping list for the skirt. And here are pattern, in, um, pattern information and instructions for... And here are the, all the patterns, so everything you need to know what to buy, yardage, all that for the patterns that are included. And moving along here, we're going to talk about sporty and stylish and what looks to be neon. So here we have this interesting blouse that buttons up and it's got side ties and why am I thinking straight jacket, but I am. Um, not really keen on this top. Let's take a look at the line art. Yeah. It's made out of a cotton blend. I'm going to pass on this pattern. Here we have a, do what they call that, a knee length dress. So it, it's got a zip up front and hoodie. And I really, I do really like this. I like this sort of athletic look. It's super casual. It looks like it's super comfortable. And do you know what I like? I think this would be great, like, if you're, you know how you go swimming, like, you say you go to the beach, and then at the end of the day, it cools down. At least in San Diego, we have chilly um, evenings here. I think you just throw this on, and you're going to be warm, and I think if you made this out of French terry, how fun would that be? Or, like, a bath towel sort of material, and it could be, like, a beach cover-up or and help dry you at the same time. Here we've got some trousers. When I'm looking at the line art, they look funky. Like they just kind of, the way they get like blued out, I don't know why. But on her, I mean, they look good. She's ma she's wearing a, a polyester mix. Look at her, look at her glasses. Well, that's a pose. Here's that dress I didn't like in the beginning. This time it's made out of a polyester blend and it, even with this funky belt and highlighter colors, this reminds me of highlighter colors, I still don't like it. Even if you make that pose wearing it, it's still not good. This too. Okay. In, like, I get what they're doing. It's cute and artsy and all that, but like, I don't know. I just don't know. It looks like she's wearing a streamer or something, a party streamer. Sometimes Berta makes me 
wonder. Um, did we see this skirt before? It looks awfully familiar. It looks like they've just added some, what is that? So top stitched pleats and they've got some pockets. So it's basically the same sort of shape as the previous skirt. And here we have a jacket. And as you, if you look at the line art, you can see how it kind of like flares out in the back. That would not be my friend. So we're not going to deal with that. Nope. Nope, Berta. Not today. Here we've got a little vest. That's cute. That's just basically like off the little hoodie dress we saw. Similar thing. Here we have a cool like beach bag with mesh. Tells you how to make that. I think that's great for the beach. Talking about the shooting location for this magazine apparently. And we have a little spotlight on the French fashion designer and Terry Mugler. Okay, sorry if you speak French or you're from France. I butchered that name. I am sure. But I'm quite familiar with this designer. He is really well known for sort of sci-fi fantasy creations. You can see here. Let me go up closer to some of this. I think it's pretty cool. And I mean, Lady Gaga likes him, so you can imagine his sort of aesthetic. Retro style. So we've got this cute um, little, I guess it's, it is a dress. You know what, because the way that I'm looking at this, it looks like this is a top and it's not attached, but it is, is it? Nope, it's not really two-piece, but this looks like it is. So it's made to look like a two-piece. It is not. It is cute. I like it, made out of this boucle. It's Paris chic, of course. Moving on, we have this. This is the plus size fashion, so Berta does offer a section in all their magazine for some plus size patterns. This one is a nice little button up dress, and I think it, the linen, yep, it's linen, it works really well for this pattern. And you've got a v neck shirt, which you can make out of this one's viscous polyester. It's just like a, like a jersey shirt. Is that jersey? It's just viscous polyester. I don't know if it's jersey or if it's just an oversized woven, like, I mean oversized, like you could fit it over your head with ease. I'm not using my words well, sorry. Here we've got some trousers, basic trousers, and then we have a button up tank with a v-neck, I like it. There's that v-neck again, here is that this one's viscous jersey. So I'm guessing that because they didn't say jersey, that this one isn't. No, they did. I just can't read. They did say jersey. It was on the second line. So yes, this is a knit. That makes much more sense. And this is the skirt we're looking at on this one. I like that. I find, I like the buttoning, like the button front skirts. But I find that I always have this gap at the waistband. Like it, and so it just hasn't worked for me and I can't figure out what it is. Whoops, what it is I'm doing wrong. So if you have any advice, let me know. Live and learn. Here we have this sort of they call it a cardigan. It's sleeveless, basically. Well, sort of sleeveless. Trousers, constructing collars. With or without a collar band. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, information on subscribing to Berta Style. If you are having trouble and you live in the United States, I'm going to link my uh, blog post below so you can get the information and get subscribed to Berta Style. And we have a preview for our June 2020 issue. Looks, uh, says here, Hawaiian prints in retro look will change a highlight. Well, Hawaiian prints in a retro look will get a highlight in this issue to show how they can also work as fashionably elegant. 
And then there's an extra. There's a cool shirt for men. So now that we've gone through the entire magazine, let me know what you think. Did you have any patterns that you really liked? Or did you think that this issue was a total bust? I think there might be one or two that I would actually make. But for the most part, um, I prefer the May issue. And I'm hoping that we'll be more inspired in June. Take care, everybody.